Hey guys, today I am reacting to Geography Now Australia. Should be pretty fucking interesting. Uh, Australia is a cool country. Pretty large. I think it's almost about the same size as the US, the mainland US. Um, yeah, it's a uh, <laughs> pretty cool country from what I've heard. Uh, the capital is Canberra, I think. I think the capital is Canberra. Let's just check though. Capital is Canberra. Okay, okay. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, and I know some of its larger cities like Melbourne and Sydney. So let's get into it. Of our chests. Koalas and kangaroos, boomerangs, did you reduce? Sydney, Melbourne, Uluru, crocodiles, cockadoos, everything that will kill you. Shrimp on Barbies, that's not true. That Vegemite stuff that tastes like poo. Coral reefs and platypuses. Pla platypus platypi. What's the plural of platypus? <laughs> All right, now let's actually learn, learn about the freaking country. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Paul Barbato. Today's gonna be Australia. You know the drill, let's dissect the flag. Oh, and that reminds you, I think the, um, what's it called? The, the people who live in Australia, right? Like the natives of the indigenous people of Australia, the Aborigines, yeah. I think they're the oldest civilization, actually. Yeah. The Australian flag has a blue field with a Union Jack on the upper hoist corner to represent that it was a former colony and a current commonwealth of the United Kingdom, with a large star under it representing the commonwealth, and the five stars on the right, the Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Crucis, to the right representing the Southern Cross constellation. All right. It's actually not a bad flag, but it is a little bit cliche and boring with the uh, Union Jack. <laughs> I mean, I feel like they could change it around. They have a lot of ideas to draw from. But it's not terrible, at least. Right, that was fun. Now let's discuss about the borders. Now, obviously, as an island nation, or rather large one, but still an island, Australia doesn't have any borders with any other nations, but that doesn't mean that Australia doesn't have some rather intriguing parameters. The country divides itself up in a rather intriguing way. Like the US, Australia has states, not provinces. There is a yep. difference. States, yeah. I think it's like, um... Western Australia, uh, Victoria, uh, Western Australia, Victoria, what's another one, uh, South Australia, New South Wales, uh, those are all the, those are all the ones, the states that I can name off hand, <laughs> South Australia, New South Wales, Western Australia, Victoria, yeah, I can only name four off hand. Six of them, and each one kind of has their own little flair and quirks, like Tasmania, known for being crazy. Oh yeah, Tasmania. Say, where things get a little interesting, though, are the territories. Australia has three domestic internal territories and six overseas territories. Technically seven if you include the Australian Antarctic Territory, even though the Antarctic Treaty kind of bans anybody from claiming Antarctic soil as their own, which we will find out in future episodes that a lot of countries do a wonderful job at ignoring. The three internal territories are Northern Territory, Capital Territory, which is basically just the capital city of Canberra and some extra space around it, and the confusing little tyke Jervis Bay territory. Jervis Bay was bought and developed to give the inland capital Canberra access to the sea, and eventually Jervis Bay split from the capital, however, it's still counted as part of the capital in elections. It's a little confusing, even though it really doesn't have much going for it, except for a small navy base and beaches that it kind of took from other neighboring towns. The most dramatic border area, though, would have to be the middle of Australia. For years, this slab of land didn't exactly quite know how to distinguish itself and has gone through four transitions in the past century. First, it was all South Australia, which didn't quite make sense because parts of it touched Yeah, the, doesn't make sense with the northern part. The northern parts of Australia. So it split into two, one state and one territory. Then for four years, it became South Australia and two territories, the new one being called Central Australian Territory. Then finally, it changed its mind and went back to being Northern Territory. Central Australia is kind of like your girlfriend at a restaurant. What do you want? 
What do you want? It's not that simple. Finally, we've reached the overseas territories. Although Australia has over 8,000 islands under its sovereignty, six of these islands operate as distinct territories, some of which sustain themselves with permanent populations. They are Ashmore and Cartier, the Cocos or Keelings Islands, Coral Sea Islands, the Heard and McDonald Islands, and the popular holiday spot, Norfolk Island, and the pleasant Christmas Island that gets attacked by huge coconut crabs every year. Finally, Australia is home to arguably the most micronations in the world. Places like the Principality of Y, Rainbow Creek, the Empire of Atlantium, and more. These nations were developed by either small groups of people or a single person because they were doing things like protesting taxes and wanted to claim autonomy, or they were just kind of bored and decided to amuse themselves. But still, hey, they tried. All right, now let's talk about the landscape, shall we? Okay, not all of Australia is a desert, okay? Only yeah, yeah, of course it's not. I mean, the coast, that's why they settled along the southeast coast and the western coast. <laughs> about 35 percent okay so besides antarctica australia is the driest continent on the planet which explains why yes 85 percent of the population just most of it population lives along the edges of the country within 50 kilometers of the coast nonetheless a lot of places specifically around the coasts actually have very temperate and even tropical landscapes by the north you find tropical zones and wetlands and rainforests by the far edges on the east and west you can find subtropical zones with lighter forests and plains a little bit inland close to the interior you find grass grasslands and flat stretches of semi-arid terrain. In the southeast by Sydney, you find temperate, cooler, arid land with semi-tropical yet slightly dry areas with an abundance of trees and plants. Then of course you have Tasmania, which is on a completely different level of green. Then we reach the deep interior where we hit the great deserts like the Great Victoria and the Great Sandy Deserts. This area is famously known as the Outback. The Outback is essentially the area of Australia with long open stretches of red and orange desert that lays out beyond the horizon with few sparse populations. Reminds me a bit of Southwest of the U.S. Of people that can be found anywhere. It has a dry, rocky, rugged terrain that everybody assumes is teeming with a variety of poisonous insects and reptiles. And, well, I mean, it kind of is, but still, there's more to it than just that. Oh, and don't forget Lake Hillier, that strange lake that is mysteriously naturally pink for some strange reason that baffles scientists. Now, if there's one thing that really epitomizes Australia, it would have to be its world-renowned beaches and coasts. People flock from all over the world just to enjoy the beautiful, pristine atmosphere of a real, authentic Australian beach. Just remember to put on your sunscreen though. Australians actually kind of have a joke where they can tell who the ignorant tourists are. It's usually the ones who think they'll be totally fine sitting out in the sun for more than 20 minutes. Skin cancer rates are actually exceptionally high in Australia. I think Australia is like the country that receives the most sun, like sunlight. Has It just has a ton of sunlight in though. Really, and the population has acknowledged- I've seen like a graph where it's like one of the countries with the highest amounts of sunlight per year the precautions that they need to take. Now we all know that Australia is home to some of the most unique and curiously distinct animal species in the world not found anywhere else. However, Australia is also known as the home of many feral species. Australia has over 50 invasive species that were brought over to the land from areas mostly in Europe and over the course of nearly one and a half centuries have bred- Oh yep, yep. I mean rabbits, uh, mice even. I mean they have a, a rat, a mice rat. A mouse plague they had, or a rat plague, or something like that. Yeah. And then a rabbit plague, I think they had as well. Just like so many rabbits breeding and so many mice uh, breeding. I think they just had this rat, um, this mice plague, actually. Let's check it out. Um, Australia. But I'd imagine you wouldn't be as affected in the cities, of course. But... Like that. Yep, the mouse plague, or mice plague. Check it out, Wikipedia. Mouse plague, okay, yeah. Uh, mouse plagues have occurred several uh, times throughout parts of Australia. Since wild mice were introduced by European colonists. Yep. So Australia and China are two places that uh, get... Mouse plagues. Spread and spread like wildfire all over the country. Animals like the European rabbit, red fox, water buffaloes, goats, pigs, even camels. And worst of all, the famous cane. Oh yeah, camels. Toad. They've all gone wild and have cost the Australian government billions of dollars in environmental damages and maintenance. Yeah, I don't really know how to transition into the demographics from this part, so. I don't like mice or rats, and they... Too bad they're in the US as well, uh... Here's demographics. 
Today, Australia has a population of about 23 million people. Now, to many outsiders, Australia is kind of known as the place where the British sent their prisoners. First of all, that's rude. Second of all, that's only like kind of half true. Yes, during the early years of Australia's colonization from the UK, droves of convicts were sent to penal colonies in Botany Bay, which is now in present day Sydney. Over 165,000 convicts, about 25,000 of which were women, were sent over the course of 80. Mostly petty crimes, yeah. And even then, I mean, most of Australia is not even descended from convicts. But yeah. Although it's still a bit of a funny name to call Australians convicts, you know. Yeah, our penals. <laughs> years. Although the British weren't the first ones to discover Australia, it was actually the Dutch. As they came, they named the land New Holland and the adjacent island. And New Zealand, yeah, New Zealand, which is a Dutch province. Next door, New Zealand, after the province of Zeeland in the Netherlands. However, as we'll soon discover, the Dutch were really good at discovering places, but kind of not so good at colonizing and maintaining those places for themselves. However, most of Australia's population Yep, like New Netherlands in the US. ...came from natural colonization from British non-convict nationals. Some would argue that Australia was kind of like the UK's version of Operation Backup Plan in case of America goes crazy. After the American Revolution, the UK tried to compensate for lost colonies by re-establishing new ones, and Australia was hot on the list. About 85% of the population is European. Asians make up the next largest minority of about... I mean, makes sense. I mean, I would consider Australia to be in Asia somewhat even, or Australasia. Some people consider Oceania a separate continent. I mean, I somewhat do, you know. Yeah. I mean, I consider it kind of part of Asia. 12%, mostly coming from China and India and other Southeast Asian countries like Vietnam and the Philippines. And by the way, yes, Australia does have black people. Not many, but before the Federation began, Africans, mostly from sub-Saharan countries like South Africa, Mauritius, Zimbabwe, and Sudan, have historically resided in Australia. It wasn't until the 60s when African assistance programs allowed many Africans to study and eventually move to Australia. And today, they... Well, they also don't have a, you know, a history of this... I guess, slavery like the U.S. does, or at least, you know, this, like, um, importation of African slaves, which, you know, which is why the U.S. is more black people, for example. But also, like, the aboriginal people of Australia, uh, they, they look black, I mean, many of them look black, although they're not the same race, actually. I'm pretty sure they're, they're very genetically distant from, uh, black African people. But yeah, they look pretty similar, I would say. They make up about 1% of the population. One demographic of people that commonly gets overlooked though would have to be the native Australians, commonly known as the Aborigines, which make up about 3% of the population. Aborigines are a very unique and distinct people group that come from hundreds of different tribes, each with their own language and dialect, spread throughout the north, south, and central regions. Today, Aboriginal rights are a huge hot-button topic in Australian legislation, and about 22% of the land of Northern Australia is Aboriginal-owned. In 2013, Aboriginal groups actually banded together and decided to kind of make their own little state called the Murawari Republic, independent from Australia. The Australian government though doesn't really recognize this claim, it just kind of brushes it off with a meh, as long as you don't cause a civil war attitude. Well, as you can see, a lot of people have come to live in Australia, but now let's see how Australia interacts with the rest of the world. Australia is... Wait, so are Aboriginal people also, I guess, uh, more Asian looking, like East Asian looking? I would guess, because like the Maori... Maori people, right, and New Zealand are also more like Asian looking, Polynesian, right? So I guess they tribes like that also exist in Australia too. Yeah. Let's just put it very simply, a very popular country. If this was high school, Australia would be on the top of the social ladder, hands down. Everybody knows something about Australia. When it comes to friends though, Australia not only goes for the cool kids, but also the strategic ones. Of course, Australia gets along with many of its Asian neighbor nations, specifically China and India, as large numbers of people from those nations live in Australia, and they do great business with them as well. Australia gets along pretty well with the island Indonesia to white things of Oceania except Fiji. In 2006, Australia refused to back up a military coup that overthrew the government in Fiji, and since then, things have been a little weird between the two countries. In terms of their best friends though, of course, New Zealand would have to rank in the top level, and they are basically like siblings that share a very similar culture, language, and histories as former colonies, whereas the UK also has a high priority on Australia's entourage as they make up the largest demographic of people ethnically and as migrants in the country. But finally, we reach the USA. The USA and Australia kind of have a little crush on each other. Australia is always there to back up the US in times when allies are necessary, and the US, well, I mean, we Americans, 
We just love Australians. We love their accents. We love their culture. We love their accents. We love their spunky Australian attitude. And we love their sexy, sexy accents. Almost any Australian that comes to the US is immediately loved and welcome, even if they are slightly sociopathic. One sentence with that accent and we are smitten. We love you. I don't know about that one. Um, seems a bit of like an exaggeration there. I mean, we have a lot of um, Australians in some cities, especially. But uh, interesting. <laughs> I mean, I do like the Australian accent, I guess. But uh, yeah. <laughs> you Australia. In conclusion, Australia is just everybody loves Australia. Stay tuned. Austria is coming up next. That was cool. Um, honestly, Australia is a pretty cool country, all things considered. I mean, definitely, um, what's it called? It uh, has an interesting culture that's, you know, permeated all throughout the world, you know? It's soft power is pretty good. We know what movies that feature Australians and such, like Chris Hemsworth, you know? And, um, what's her name? The actor that was, uh, that played in Suicide Squad? What's the actor? I forgot the name, but yeah. Uh, Holly Quinn, yeah. But I don't remember the, the actor who plays it, but she's also Australian. Of course, Chris Hemsworth, Liam Hemsworth, <laughs> you know, all the Hemsworth brothers. Uh, Taika Waititi, the famous director. Also a bit of an actor himself, so yeah. Well, Australia definitely has some fame and stuff. It's a cool country. Uh, although I don't like when uh, Aussies say Seppo, <laughs> but I don't really care too much, you know. Because if they call me a Seppo, I'll call them a fucking convict. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's pretty fun. Cool country, honestly. Respected him. Um, let's check out some of the comments. We in Australia don't have an accent. Accent, it's other countries that do. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I mean, everybody at the end of the day does have an accent, but I think he's just taking a bit of a piss there. Also, Canberra is pronounced Canberra. Canberra, okay, that's how I should say it now. Canberra. Said is one word, and Melbourne, yeah, Melbourne. I know what Melbourne said. Well, Prime Minister Harold Holt went swimming one day and never came back. So he named the swimming pool after him. Mate, this cracked me up. I'm an Aussie and the part about the accents was hilarious. <laughs> it's fucking Canberra. <laughs> yeah, but the part about Aboriginals makes me kind of sad. I'm not an Aussie. Oh yeah, I guess we also call Australians Aussies, yeah. Aussies, convicts, yeah. True, many Aboriginals live in the remote areas of the states, especially in the Northern Territory, where many live hundreds of kilometers from any city, and they are often not very well off, but the Australian government gives them financial benefits. Yeah, okay. There are many who care a lot about the Aboriginals and have dedicated their whole lives to helping communities, and I can tell you that these communities would be far worse if it was not for these people. <laughs> Australia belongs to Aboriginals, go back. I don't know if go back, but it does, I mean. In some ways it does, yeah, it definitely belong to Aboriginals, just like the US belongs to Native Americans. But uh, hopefully now we can all live in peace, you know, nowadays, of course. <laughs> yeah. If no one colonized, Australia would most likely be a third world country. So? <laughs> does it really matter? Yeah, but no Aboriginal got benefited with your colonization. I feel like there's always an argument. It's just, it's not the best one, really. Because the people could have developed, you know, with modern trade connections to China and other Asian countries. But yeah. The world is a cat playing with Australia. <laughs> the Australian actu actually once was one emus. The emus won, yeah. <laughs> the emu war. Here in Greece, we love Australia so much. So many of us live there. True, true, yeah. Why, well, yeah, I'm Greek living in Australia and we have a huge Greek population. Largest Greek population outside Greece lives in Melbourne. Oh, damn. I know there's a lot of Greek people here, too. At least in, in you know, New York, for example. Oh, some other cities. Probably like uh, Los Angeles, a lot of Greeks as well. But yeah, I know in New York there's a lot of Greeks. I love Australia from Japan. I lived in Sydney for three years. People would, they were so nice, even though I don't speak English very well. I love their sociability. Every time I went to a pub, they talked to me and I had a great time. Comments cut off a bit, but... Yeah. The United States and Australia have a crush on each other. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> we're sisters. 
<laughs> if an Asian goes to an Australian beach, you are bound to be on Bondi Rescue. Bondi Rescue? Oh, they drown. Oh, damn. Well, I mean, everyone should be wearing some sunscreen. <laughs> you don't want to get skin cancer. Yeah. 99% of the Bondi rescues are Asian. Kind of sad and funny at the same time. They never, ever stay between the red flags, and they always seem to get caught in the back package. Damn, that's, that's a bit sad. Uh, this Nepali guy's got it swimming. That's cool. That's cool. Probably got it mountaineering as well. Oh, no, that's a bit of a stereotype, though. Um... I know a lot of Aussies go to vacation in Japan, I thought, like in the northern parts for snow and such. I'm Brazilian. Australia is my favorite country and I hope I'll visit it someday. Big love to Australia from Iran and my best friend is Australia. Australia also gets along with Greece and Japan. If you need help with Antarctica, hit me up. That's where I was born and raised. <laughs> Typical penguin. <laughs> uh, you saw in the comment section. Antarctica belongs to the seals. Why don't you migrate back where you belong, damn penguin? <laughs> What's your response, typical penguin? <laughs> this is great, honestly. I fucking love this comment. <laughs> you know nothing about Antarctic history. We Arctic whales have claimed Anta Antarctica for thousands of years. Seals and penguins are always fighting over land when really whales should have Antarctica. Hey, typical whale, thinking they own everything. You guys only stay a couple times in the year anyway. Antarctica has belonged to the seals and sea lions for thousands of years to remember the great war between the whales and sea and seals. Yeah, we won, and so we should have Antarctica. Bro, you don't even know what it is like to, constant, to be constantly on the move, avoiding poachers and harpoons. <laughs> we whales have made Antarctica a better place over the years. All you damn penguins and seals want to do is kill each other for food. If we owned Antarctica, we could change that. This is the funniest conversation ever, bro. Yeah, right. You can't even go on land anyway. Us seals are masters of sea and land. Besides, you're probably not even from Antarctica. You're probably from an aquarium and think that just because my parents are from Antarctica, I am too. Yeah. Whatever you look like, experiment gone wrong at one of the research stations. Holy crap, this is the best comment thread ever. For your information, <laughs> I'm in Antarctica right now. If you think you're so tough, tell me where in Antarctica you are. <laughs> this is too funny, bro. <laughs> I'm just outside McMurdo Station in the Iceberg. Just to let you know, I got my homies backing me up. <laughs> this is funny. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm on my way fam, you don't know who you're messing with. I was trained to fight by killer whales and you know the whale from the whale vs sea lion video. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> that's not you man, that's that's Scarf in the whale from McDonald Island. And by the way, whales have only caused more trouble for Antarctica. You damn fish haven't hunted down my people for centuries. And even if you're not a killer whale, you guys still support them. I thought you said you were gonna find, you were gonna find me bro, I'm waiting. Yeah, you too far far away. I live on the eastern side of Antarctica. Not that video from the one last year, and I don't even eat penguin. Dead stem killer whales. Not every whale is an extremist. You don't even, you don't even, you don't, <laughs> you know, even some killer whales have gone vegan. That's what I thought. You couldn't fight me. If you tried, you're probably one of the same fools who supports moving polar bears to Antarctica. Are you? Anyway, you can't deny we won the war of Antarctica. The whales are too damn stupid anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I pulled bears are in the north, not the south. <laughs> You're not even worth my time. English is not even my first language. Whale is, whale is, but I still have better grammar than you. And then you call me dumb. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Why can't we all just get along? I know we all have our differences, but we all have one thing in common. A love for Antarctica. But the whales kill your people for food. How could you love them? Like, your people have made no mistake, sea lions kill more penguins than whales do. 90% of whales eat krill anyway. Some of my best friends are krill, dude. Antarctica needs a better government. I am tired of your communist whales thinking you know everything. Penguins and sea lions slash seals have been getting along for the past decade now. But in your first comment, you said, why don't you go migrate back where you belong, damn penguin? <laughs> do you like the penguins or hate them? Personally, I can't stand those damn penguins. I'm just saying that the majority of seals, especially lions, have been getting along fine. <laughs> Don't listen to them. Sea lions kill more penguins than any other animal. 
Too far, man. Too far. <laughs> you guys can live in Antarctica, but can't. But you can't claim it because of the Antarctic Treaty. Human rules. I don't think it applied to a species that isn't the human. What the actual? Did I just enter the Twilight Zone? Uh, no, you entered the internet. Sup fam, I heard you in trouble, so I came quick as I could. Antarctica belongs to whales. It always has been. No illegal steel and penguins are allowed. <laughs> no multiculturalism in Antarctica. Whale pride. Oh man, this is funny. <laughs> oh man, that's cucumber secretly on Antarctica. I was born in Antarctica and moved to Australia when I was a penguin trick. Now I'm a penguin in SeaWorld on YouTube. I also learned how to speak English from the adults and children that scream and carry on. One memory from SeaWorld is that this penguin named Flipper was telling his friend Beagie that, that his crush was going to watch him slide down an ice slope. So he did, but he failed horribly. Ah. <sighs> this was a funny ass comment section, bro. I love this comment section. I'm Australian and I never knew every country loved us. Alrighty then. Guess that's a win. I'm Tasmanian and had no idea we were supposed to be crazy. Guess I'll just go with it. I know some Tasmanians, they're alright. I've lived in Australia my whole life and I've never heard about Jarvis Bay before. No as anyone I know. <laughs> New Zealand is to Australia as Canada is to the US. <laughs> Love how people from the United States think our culture is so good. Our culture. Meat pies and watch every AFL cricket and footy game ever played. <laughs> I do like meat pies though. <sighs> I still call Australia home. Good day from the rest of the world. I love Australia from Philippines. Anyone else cringe when you pronounce Canberra <laughs> instead of Canberra? I mean, even I pronounced it wrong for quite a bit, so I just pronounced it wrong for most of this video, I think, even. <laughs> but now I know it's Canberra. Yeah. The Australian Alps are so snowy and beautiful. Would love to see it one day. Sending lots of love to Australia from China. Everybody loves Australia. North Korea. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm Australian and I legit did not know about Jarvis Bay being a territory. Finally, someone in the world who knows cricket to sport. Love from India. We have more New Zealanders living here in New Zealand, has in the South Island. <laughs> this is funny. As Australia, we're kind of like the dumb best friend that that's like, yeah, mate, he will fuck you up. <laughs> Just a little joke from Neil Col Kolhatka. Anyway, this is a freaking great video. Respect to the Aussies, the Australians. Uh, cool shit, honestly. Uh, yeah, I love you, convicts. <laughs> but uh, please comment down below your thoughts, opinions, and uh, like this video and subscribe. It was really fun reacting to it, I mean. Australians are generally pretty cool people. Uh, yeah, see ya.